informed Mavs owner Mark Cuban he will not be returning this season. Carlisle, who won an NBA title a decade ago, had two years left on his deal, and the decision comes one day after the team fired longtime GM Donnie Nelson yesterday. We now have seven head coach openings in the league. Carlisle had been with the team since 2008, tied with Eric Spolstra for the second longest tenured head coach with his coach in Mavericks history. With Carlisle stepping down, three of the five longest tenured coaches entering this season are no longer the head coaches of those squads. Senior NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski broke the story earlier this afternoon, joins us now on SportsCenter. Woj, what more can you tell us about why Carlisle is not coming back to the Mavericks? Uh, Kevin, I, I just think ultimately relationships had been frayed in Dallas. I think Donnie Nelson's departure as general manager left Rick Carlisle in a place where there's there's a new uh, top basketball executive coming in that you haven't worked with, that you don't know, that you may not know uh, whether you fit with him. And I think for Rick Carlisle at this point in his career, in a marketplace where there's multiple head jobs open and Rick Carlisle goes out into that marketplace with a championship, that 2011 title with Dallas, it makes him unique out there. Uh, and I just think his time and his run in Dallas after 13 years was over. That's a long time to coach anywhere in this day and age. Woj, you mentioned relationships. That's the key here. How does this decision by Carlisle and yesterday's move with Donnie Nelson affect Luka Doncic's future in Dallas? I don't think it affects it at all, Kevin. He is in line to sign a 200 million dollar extension uh, once free agency opens and and listen I, I think Luca was very fond of Donnie Nelson you heard him talk about that uh, in that statement uh, in Europe earlier today uh, but ultimately he's focused on signing that deal now he leaves it to Mark Cuban to go out and find a general manager to hire a head coach you know there is an assistant on staff Jamal Mosley you know who's been a, a, a top candidate for other head coaching openings. Luka Doncic is very fond of him. I certainly believe he'll be a candidate in this process, but the chance to coach Luka Doncic, there'll be a lot of interest around the league in it. But Mark Cuban told our Tim McMahon that he's going to hire uh, a general manager before he does a coaching search. Okay, let's talk about action tonight. Kyrie Irving out again for the Nets, but James Harden is available tonight as Milwaukee tries to force a game seven back to Brooklyn. What's at stake here for Giannis and head coach Mike Budenholzer and the Bucks tonight heading into game six? Well, obviously, I was a kid. He was the one that drafted me. It was tough for me seeing that. But I'm not the one making the decisions there. Mark Spears, you hinted at this yesterday. What do you make of Luca's comments? Well, you know, the play writer Sophocles once said, no one loves a messenger who brings bad news. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Dallas. I tried to give you a heads up. <laughs> I knew you guys weren't happy about it. Neither was a lot of the Homer media there. Mm. And that's okay. I think everything will eventually work out. You know, Luca has a great manager, uh, Laura Beth Seeger, Bill Duffy. His agent is a great agent who has had such international superstars as Steve Nash and Yao Ming. He'll take the money, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll figure it out. But when there's smoke, there is fire, and there was, there was fire today that I warned you about. <laughs> That's it. Oh, Rachel, I mean, look, in order to keep Luca happy, I know I am saying water is wet, but isn't there only one answer here? And that is to win. They need to go and win. And yes, that means it's easier said than done. They need to come in and potentially bring in a player who can also break down the defense, who can be a second option. They need to address whatever's going on with Kristaps Porzingis and Luca, all of this stuff. But he said, I'm not the one that's in charge here. Maybe he's a little bit more in charge than one thought. Now, I don't think he's going to turn down a $200 million contract, especially with that smile he threw us when he was asked about it at the end of the season. But win. Just go win. <laughs> well, look, uh, yes, he will sign the extension. I would keep saying that. No one's trying to take him, quote, out of Dallas or any of that. No. But clearly, there needs to be a little bit more buy-in. And I always think it's actually very smart of organizations that take their star players' opinions into account player in the game? No. He was Shaq was never the best player in the game. The, yes, oh, yes, he was. the he was. most dominant. Yes, he was. He was the yes, best player in the game. Okay. Oh, big perks here for this. Hey, Perk. But Max, um, I'm going to start with you. I know you got some feelings on that. Was Shaq ever the best player in the NBA? I, unless you have amnesia, of course. Is this a trick question? Shaq, do me a favor. Tweet at the show. Just answer this question yourself. Because I know 
what Kobe and Shaq used to say. Kobe best, Shaq most dominant. But let me make it simple. And Stephen A. picks, picks up on Shaq most dominant, not the best. Oh, well, he's not the most skilled Duncan or Kobe had more skills. That In 99-2000, Shaq was the MVP. 30 points, 14 boards, and three blocks a game. He was the finals MVP three years in a row. <laughs> three-time finals MVP. By the way, he and Kobe played on the same team. He was a three-time finals MVP. And, and But let me cut through all the nonsense. In those years, let's just take 99-2000. If we said, okay, list the best players in the NBA, the only position mm -hmm. that Shaq would be in is one. So everything else is semantics. You'd have Shaq one, and then either Kobe or Duncan two, and then the other three, and then, and then you know, KG or whoever four. But Shaq would be one, and that was not the only season he'd be one on the list. In fact, the guy who had the most kind of undisputed claim to being the number one guy in the NBA, the best player in the NBA, between Jordan and LeBron's prime, I mean, Kobe was that. Duncan, you could argue, was that. But the guy who had the number one most undisputed claim was Shaq. That was the dude. How are we going to sit here and pretend that didn't happen? Of course Shaq was the best player in the game. Well, first of all, my apologies because I thought that we were talking about in terms of their playing time and whatever. 1999-2000, two, Shaq averaged 29-7, and he was clearly in his prime most dominant, no question about it. He was unbelievable. From that point forward, it was Kobe, period. And when I look at Tim Duncan, I look at Tim Duncan and how spectacular he was. That sec after Shaq won the MVP and they won their championship that year, the very next year, Kobe averaged 28 and a half. I would remind you that Shaq was shooting 52% from the free throw line. I would remind you that Shaq was getting bigger and bigger and Shaq played when he wanted to play. Now be very clear about this. Shaq was clearly the most dominant. I think Shaq is the most dominant force we've ever seen other than Will Chamberlain. In our lifetime. In our lifetime, yeah. okay? Yeah. That's the most dominant force. And I'm not throwing any shade whatsoever. But not only did Shaq des defer to Kobe in key moments, Shaq deferred to Kobe in the fourth quarter. Of course. Shaq deferred to Kobe at the free throw line. And Shaq, even though he could defend, especially if you challenged him, he'd shut you up real quick. That's not something he really, really had to do. So when I'm looking at Shaq overall, and I'm thinking from a skill set, the man was 7'1", 330 pounds he walked around with, all right? He was mobile, he was agile, his footwork was big time. He could, be, he could do damage when he wanted to. He'd be in the open court finishing off fast breaks. We get all of that. But at the end of the day, when you have a teammate, the likes of Kobe Bean Bryant, okay? I'm sorry, I don't feel that way, but again, Again, the mistake is mine, not yours, because I wasn't really talking about 1999-2000. I thought, you know, I, 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 thought, I thought you was looking at it basically during their time during together, time. but I'll dispute that too. All right, I, you can dispute that, but I'm telling you, Shaq is unstoppable, the most dominant force other than Wilt Chamberlain we have ever seen in the history of basketball. But in terms of the best from a skilled perspective, I mean, I look at Tim Duncan. I look at Kobe Bryant as teammate. I'm he's, not, he's not more skilled than those guys. I'm just saying, rank them. One, two, three. Shaq, not just in 99-2000. I mean, Kobe was a, incredible. Of course he was the closer. He's the guy who could handle the ball, create his own shot, clutch player, the whole thing. But Shaq, the following year, after those numbers I gave you, gave you 29, 13, and three blocks. Again, basically the same numbers. And by the way, he was the finals MVP, not just in 99-2000, but in 2000-2001. No answer to him. 2000-2002, he and Kobe played on the Again. same team. Let's he was let, the let, finals let MVP. Let's get in here, guys. Let's let's Kirk, get, in. get in on this. Where are you? There you are. I'm, I'm right here, Molly. And Molly, I just want to know what's going on today. I've been watching First Take all morning, and I just want to say this right now to Stephen A. and Max. Stay off the weed. <laughs> I don't know if it's I don't I don't know if it's the it's OG Friday. being passed around the purple. I don't know the strands that's going around over there at Seaport Studio right now. But some of the things I've been hearing this morning has been blasphemous. Okay. But look, Stephen A, I gotta agree with Max on this point. Because for those three years, not only was Shaq dominant, he was the face of the NBA. I can't think of no other I guy that, that was having an imprint. On 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 the on the NBA like Shaquille O'Neal. I mean, he was averaging during that time twenty seven points a game.